Hello, welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us for this week's online worship from Fort William Douglas from Macintosh and Kilmanevig. I hope you're going to enjoy sharing in our worship this week. This is the week in which we finally get to the stage that our church in Douglas from Macintosh is open, a few weeks behind Kilmanevig and some of the other congregations. So I hope that you'll pray for the the, the success and safety of our, our reopening efforts this week and in the weeks ahead. We're still not back to being able to have services every week, so do keep an eye if you're thinking of coming to an in-person service for which week's services are taking place in which places. If you were really thirsty and looking for a drink of water, where might you look? The answer is fairly obvious, isn't it? There's plenty of water in the tap. Of course, if you're somewhere that that wasn't an option, you might have to come up with an alternative plan. There's also bottled water in the fridge, which is available when it's needed. And of course, if you find yourself a bit off the beaten track, a fast flowing mountain burn is just as refreshing as any water you'll find anywhere. But would you think of coming here? Yet in the story we're going to be sharing, that's exactly what happened. They have no water. They have no way to look for water. There are no rivers. There are no lakes. They haven't seen an oasis since they left Egypt. So what are they supposed to do? The people are in the desert. They're thirsty. And instead of asking sensible and creative questions, they do what they always seem to do. They just moan. They moan to Moses, why did you bring us out here in the desert so that we would die with thirst? Couldn't you have left us alone in Egypt? God tells Moses to go with the leaders of the people to where there is a great rock. And where that rock is, Moses is to get his staff, which he's had since he was in Egypt. The one that was part of the work of persuading Pharaoh to let the people go. The one that he held out over the Red Sea to part it. And he's told he's to stand in front of the rock and hit it. Now Moses has had a few moments over the course of this story where he could quite legitimately have wondered, is God serious? Does God mean this? Why exactly does he want me in front of all of the people of the whole, of the whole country, the whole nation, to stand and hit a rock with a stick? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if there's one thing Moses has learned in the course of his journey, it's that when God asks something, you take him seriously, you listen. So Moses takes himself and all of the people out to the great rock which he has been directed to. And here's what happens next. Water from the rock. The whole Israelite community left the desert of sin, moving from one place to another at the command of the Lord. They made camp at Rephidim, but there was no water there to drink. They complained to Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses answered, why are you complaining? Why are you putting the Lord to the test? But the people were very thirsty and continued to complain to Moses. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Moses prayed earnestly to the Lord and said, what can I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, take some of the leaders of Israel with you and go on ahead of the people. Take along the stick with 
which you struck the Nile. I will stand before you in a rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. Moses did so in the presence of the leaders of Israel. The place was named Massa and Meribah because of the Israelites complained and put the Lord to the test when they asked, Is the Lord with us or not? Standing in front of the rock, as he has been told, Moses strikes it with his staff. And to his amazement, what happens next is that the rock splits open. The rock splits and water comes flooding out and the people have what they need. To drink. Here in Loch Aber, we rarely have to worry about running out of water. Enough of the time it tips down from the sky and pours down off the hills that we're never really in short supply. And while it's an essential of life, we tend not to give it that much thought. It was different though for the people who had left Egypt with Moses. For them in a desert area, water was a matter of life and death. If they didn't find it, they and their cattle and their families were finished. And as has happened several times before, they come moaning and complaining. In so many parts of the Bible, water is used as a symbol of life. In the Psalms, we sometimes read about a tree planted beside a stream of water flourishing. Or in Ezekiel, there's a picture of water flooding out of the temple, bringing life to all the dead land round about. Or Jesus talks to the Samaritan woman at the well in Sychar. And what he offers to her is life, new life. And the picture he uses to describe it is living water. It takes her a while to work out that he isn't offering to free her from her daily chores but rather to give her something much more essential than that. But once again, water is a picture of life. For the people in the desert, that was a very real truth that they had to face. If they didn't find water, they wouldn't survive. They wouldn't make it. And rather than trusting in the God who's brought them this far, they start to moan and complain and grumble. They go to Moses and say, what are you going to do about it? You have to get us water. And Moses by now must be thinking, what do I have to do to satisfy these people? But he knows that the need is urgent. It can't be set aside. It can't be left for a day or two. They need water and they need it now. God directs Moses to a great rock at the bottom of a mountain. In fact, he's at the bottom of Sinai, which is going to have such a major place in his story. And God says to him, go and hit that rock with a stick. I can imagine what Moses thought of that. What sort of fool will I appear to be if I do that and nothing happens? With all the Israelite community looking at me. But God sends him and he says to make sure they don't miss the message, take the same stick that you used in Egypt when you had to bring plagues to the land to persuade Pharaoh to let the people go. Use the same staff that you held over the sea at the Red Sea so that the people could get across on dry land. I don't want them to miss the point that I'm going to help them. And Moses has the faith to do what he's told. He goes out, he hits the, the rock with his staff and somehow water flows out. Did he dislodge something that was blocking a small spring? Was it just a coincidence that at a time when water was about to well up from somewhere anyway, 
Moses and the people come along? Did God do something just completely inexplicable and extraordinary? We can't really tell. But anyway around the people needed water and God provided it for them. And what the story says to me is this. We have a God who gives us life. Gives us, as Jesus put it, life in all its fullness. Water is a good symbol of that, as good a symbol as any. And it reminds us that we have a God who knows the deepest of our needs. Who wants us to live and to flourish and to grow. He doesn't walk away from us and he doesn't leave us. And so at a time when we've been asking hard questions as restrictions increase and look like they might last for a long time and all of us are wondering how are we going to cope with that how are we going to deal with that we're reminded by this story that we have a life-giving God who energizes and enables and inspires us who meets our deepest needs who refreshes us just like streams of water in the desert It's an interesting story, isn't it? That once again the people need something. Once again they don't think of asking God for help. They just moan to Moses. And for us the reminder is, yes, life can be hard. Yes, life can be challenging. Tough things can come our way. But we don't ever face them by ourselves. We face them with God, supported and loved and accompanied by him. And in him we find that refreshment that we need, that new life that we seek for, the new life that Jesus came to bring for each one of us. Now shall we come to God in prayer, let's pray together. Gracious God, for thirsty and frightened people in the desert, you provided water to drink. For a damaged, broken woman at the well in Sychar, Jesus provided living water. And for us too, you provide the life-giving water of your spirit, bringing new energy, new hope, new possibilities to each one of us. And so we thank you for your goodness to us and pray that you will help us to know your refreshing and your renewal in our lives. Lord, we pray for people with hard decisions to take. It's been a difficult week and we pray for those for whom life is challenging, for students going to universities and finding life is not as they expected and facing all kinds of challenges uh, to do with the coronavirus and the regulations they're under. We pray for people who are frustrated or disappointed at the potential length of restrictions stretching in front of us and we find that a difficult thought and we might need the new energy and new life that you can bring. We ask for people who are working under challenging situations, for people in hospitals and care homes and essential services of every kind, give them your strength and your renewal and your blessing. And we ask for wisdom and guidance as we Feel for the ways of reopening churches and starting worship, which will not be quite as it's been, not quite as we're used to. And therefore we ask that you'll give your wisdom to everybody with decisions to make in that respect too. Lord, your goodness never leaves us. So help us not to be like the grumbling Israelites, always looking for the latest problem, but rather to be people who see your love, your strength, your blessing in our lives and who rely on you and trust you for the help we need day by day. Father God, we ask that you'll hear our own prayers for our own personal needs and for our concerns, for the people closest to us for whom we're uh, anxious or concerned just now. And we ask that you'll hear us as we share all of our prayers together in the words of the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors now and forevermore. Amen. 
We're going to finish off our service with a blessing and after that we're going to hear a piece of music which was used in one of our earlier services but I think you'll enjoy the chance to hear this particular piece of music again. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>